I'm here live with Brad Yates. Brad, thank you so much for joining me today. I really appreciate you taking the time out of your busy schedule. I'm so excited to have you here for my episode of Success Mindset TV. How are you? Are you okay? I'm doing excellent, thanks. Thank you for having me on the show. Oh, it's wonderful, wonderful to have you. I'm so excited, as you can tell. Um, I'm just going to introduce you first to the viewers that might not know you. I'm sure most of the viewers know who you are. Um, but Brad Yates, he's phenomenal. He's an EFT master. He's, um, he taught EFT all around the world and online. His, his phenomenal work on YouTube. He's produced well in excess of 900 videos, which is just fantastic. And that's it, 30 million views, doesn't it? 30 million views across the globe, which is just phenomenal. So congratulations on that. And um, so Brad trained directly with the innovator of EFT, Gary Craig. And he's a published author and he's been featured an expert in the film, The Tapping Solution. And EFT, for those of you that don't know, is a phenomenal technique. The best way I can describe it is like function without the needles, isn't it? You talk on whatever the issue you want to, want to resolve. The best way to describe it is like a, a modern talking psychology combined with a Chinese acupressure therapy, uh, for those viewers that don't know. But Brad, thank you so much for joining me. Um, just get straight into the first question, if that's all right, because I'd really be interested to know kind of what, what led you to EFT in the first place? Was it something personal or what, what kind of led you down that road initially? <laughs> Yeah. How does a grown man find himself tapping on his face for a living? Uh, <laughs> I always knew that I was going to be doing this uh, <laughs> long, be, long before anyone discovered it. I, uh, I actually started out as an actor okay. and had traveled to theater and went to Hollywood to be a movie star. And while I was there, I met a woman, fell in love, got married. And when our first child was on the way, I thought, you know, I should probably have a backup career. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so I'd always been fascinated with the power of the mind. Okay. So I trained to become a hypnotherapist mm -hmm. and I started doing that and I st was building a small practice while I was still pursuing my acting career. Sure. And about two and a half years later, when our second child was on the way, I realized that as much as I loved acting, personal development work was really my calling. Mm -hmm. This is really where I felt uh, the most fulfilled. So retired from acting, moved to Northern California, and through some other hypnotherapists, heard about tapping. Okay. And I went and took a training with Gary Craig, the founder of EFT, mm -hmm. and just fell in love with this technique. And little by little started introducing it into my hypnotherapy sessions, which little by little turned into EFT sessions. Okay. I, what what soul was at that workshop with Gary, he uh, handed out Hershey's Kisses. And said, okay, on a scale of zero to 10, how much do you want that chocolate? And I was a bit of a chocoholic at the time. And I'm thinking eight, nine, <laughs> about to gobble the thing down. And, and so we just tapped for a few moments. And I could not eat the chocolate. And I did not eat chocolate for two years after that. Wow. Amazing. Uh, I got better. I recovered. But, uh, <laughs> but I was like, wow. I mean, I, I literally could not force myself to eat that after having craving for it. So I'm like, there is really something to this technique. Yeah, sure. So it, so it became my main technique after a while. And, and then YouTube came along and I thought, Hey, wouldn't it be really cool if there was a tapping video that people could start their day with mm -hmm. and I'll call it tap of the morning. <laughs> and, yeah. and that was all I intended to do. It was that one video. Okay. And then about six months later, I thought, I should have one to end the day and I'll call it tap of the evening and then I'm done. Then three months later, I had another idea and then another. And now, as you said, there's over 900. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's phenomenal. Cause when was the start of that journey? What, what year would that have been? So it was 2000. It was right, 20 okay. years ago yeah, that, sure. uh, that I learned EFT. Yeah. From Gary. Yeah. Uh, I'd been a hypnotherapist for a couple of years before that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then, uh, yeah, YouTube was, around 2007 that that started that, and wow. then I put up that wow. first video. Yeah, sure. Because I, like many others, I've never heard of this technique years ago and I was introduced to, I was in a totally different place to where I am now back in 2011 and I was, um, I'd, I'd ended a bad marriage and I had my confidence on the floor and I went to see a highly recommended therapist and literally within the first session he started doing this weird tapping thing on my face and was like, what, what is this weird stuff? Like, how, how's that going to work, you know? But I trusted him because he came highly recommended. And the results that I saw for myself was just fantastic. And I started using this and he pointed me to your videos, may I say, within the first session or two. He said, there's someone called Project, go and check him out, which I did. 
And I just want to say, over the years, I've used your videos for various, various personal issues, various to do with work and professional, and it's just transformed so many areas of my life. So I mean, I want to say a, a huge thanks personally, and also to all those millions of other people, the comments and comments that you see, don't you, below the, the videos, that how you've just transformed people's lives with this wonderful technique, you know, and, and, and I see it with clients. And, and how, how would you say, obviously you talked about that, that experience with chocolate, which is amazing. I had a very similar experience in, in my training. And what, what, how would you say kind of EFT has changed your life personally? What, apart from obviously the professional stuff, well, what has it done for you as well on a, on a personal level, would you say? Uh, well, I've achieved some of the fame that I was hoping for as an actor. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, all kinds of, of things, Certain, you know, certainly okay. professionally it's, it, it's benefited me, but yeah. there's, a, there's an, an openness to experiences. You know, I think, you know, when I was an actor, actors talk about wanting to be seen and you know, most actors want, if it's not fame in terms of fame and fortune, it's just they want to be seen and have their work be seen. Yeah. But at the same time, I had a lot of blocks. I was very resistant to success. And so fortunately, I've, I've cleared a lot of that so that my work is able to be seen in order to benefit as many people as possible. Sure. Uh, you know, certainly with at different times, like the chocolate craving with health issues, being able to clear out cravings, you know, like after the, uh, in quarantine, like many people, I put on a COVID-19, I uh, gained a lot of weight and have fortunately over the last month or two taken all that off <laughs> and tap has been very beneficial in that sure. it's because this, this, as you said, rather strange looking technique, mm, yeah. you know, based on acupuncture is one of the quickest forms of stress relief. Mm -hmm. And so whenever we're trying to make changes in our lives, we have a stress response. Yes. And so we can be trying to do all these different techniques, but there's a part of us that will shut that down and stop it. Mm -hmm. And so to be able to break down that stress gives us the emotional freedom to be able to do the, uh, do the things that get us the results that we want. And sure. that's why it's so powerful. Of course, because I say to people, sometimes you hear the word emotional freedom technique and it sounds a bit wacky and it's a bit, but when you break it down, you're freeing yourself from an old emotion of the past. And I was only saying that to someone I met yesterday on, on a Zoom call, we're going to look at doing some work together because she'd not heard of it before. And when we break it down like that, she'll, yeah, she kind of saw it in a different way, you know? So it's sometimes kind of explaining to people kind of what it is and how it works. And I think the science behind it is, is, is really, really kind of important as well, isn't it? To show people how and why it does work because this weird looking thing that you do on your face and, and whatnot, it's like, what? How does that work? Right. Why, why on that, on earth would that work? It's like, well, <laughs> because it's, it's calming down that stress response. And so when we think about these things that we want to do, because we're making choices constantly and most of our choices are made um, unconsciously, uh, constantly making unconscious choices. And most of these choices are done on an on a emotional level. Mm -hmm. We're trying to make ourselves feel better. And so we don't have the emotional freedom to make the choices that we know would get us the results that we want. I know that I could eat better. I know that I could exercise. I know that I could be more productive in my work. I know that I could reach out to people. But emotionally, it's like, that feels scary. I'm afraid there's going to be some sort of consequence. I, part of us really wants uh, homeostasis. We want to stay the way things are. Even if our lives are crap, it's our crap. We know how to deal with it. We dealt with it yesterday. It's familiar. And there's a part of it that says, I'd rather deal with the same familiar crap than deal with something new that I don't know what it's going to be like. Yeah. Even though part of me says, it's going to be fantastic. I have my vision board. It looks wonderful. But that's 10% of my conscious mind against 90% of my unconscious mind saying, no, there's unknowns. There's, and people will be jealous of you and your family will disown you, and all kinds of different beliefs. And that all, we experience all that as stress yeah. and shuts us down and says, okay, back off, back off. Oh, look, get distracted by something. Yeah, sure. And this calms us down so that we can reconsider our beliefs. I started calling the work that I do reconsideration process. 
Because yeah. it's looking yeah. at those thoughts and beliefs that we have that control our behavior and, mm -hmm. and thus our results and reconsidering them. Yeah. And the tapping gives us that freedom to reconsider because because we don't like change in our mind we like to mm. hold on to our beliefs even if they're obviously not working for us yeah 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 so it's kind of set like gary calls the secondary gains isn't it and but 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 even i you know i've been a practitioner for, for a number of years now even now i see these phenomenal results and it just blows me away every time you know and so so for you because you have done so much work around the world with your workshops and online and the phenomenal what you do what would you say has been your biggest or biggest kind of juiciest or biggest success story or success stories i mean there must be so many but <laughs> yeah, it's you know sometimes it's like the 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 most recent one is the one that's uh most exciting you know um sure. working with a you know working with a couple of clients yesterday and just to when we start a, a round and and there's something that's going on for them and they just you know talking about whether it's something that they're currently struggling with trying to take action on something and feeling blocked or it's a childhood memory that you know decades later still causes emotional pain and after just a few minutes they can be laughing about it yeah yeah and 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 so you know there are you know have the the i've been fortunate enough to see to help folks create change in in all kinds of different areas with emotional trauma with uh physical well-being with money issues sure. and and to hear you know even just on youtube as you said seeing the comments that people write in and say oh my goodness i was feeling so distraught and i turned on youtube and found your video and i'm feeling so much relief right now yeah sure and and even if it's just a little thing like that it's like okay that's the most recent wonderful thing i've heard <laughs> yeah it's just for that. And, you, and i've seen that so much on the comments you know people experience such such change you know through, through watching your videos and discovering eft and, and kind of on that note i i completed some research recently actually which is really exciting it got published in a peer-reviewed journal into eft looking at why eft isn't yet considered mainstream so it got published in the energy psychology journal a couple oh, months ago, which is which is really really exciting, you know, and, and the, some of the research is is phenomenal. I think the research has really progressed, hasn't it, in the last kind of five to ten years? And EFT has obviously progressed so much. But given the results, you see the phenomenal results. What? Why do you think EFT isn't yet considered mainstream? You know, why isn't it a treatment option for the National Health Service in the UK or the equivalent in America? What What would you What would be your answer to that? Do you think the the first one is going back to the idea that it looks a little silly. Yeah, sure. And, and, you know, just talking about issues, hey, we talk about everything. There's nothing weird about that. Yeah. Uh, but this, it, it just feels a little too strange for, for a lot of folks. And they people feel embarrassed about sharing it. I, I'm very grateful for all the people who share my work. Mm -hmm. And... And I know that it's not always easy because it's like, it's very easy to send a funny cat video, but to send a video of somebody tapping on their face and saying, and you should tap on your face while watching it. A lot of people are like, all right, uh, the men in the white jackets are on their way over. Uh, and I think that's the main thing. It, the idea that it's so quick and so simple sure. and can, is is daunting to people it, it sounds too much like a um a panacea and you know it's oh it's this miracle cure it's, and it's not a miracle cure it's at, at its very basis is it's stress relief but when you look at the fact that most if not all of the issues we face physically and emotionally are either caused by or at least worsened by stress then you can understand why this technique of lowering stress helps us to process and resolve those issues. And, and certainly as you talk about the research, uh, my friend, Dr. Peter Stapleton down in Australia has done some fantastic research recently. She had her book come out uh, last year, The Science Behind Tapping. She's done the first fMRI studies mm -hmm. where you can actually see brain scans and you can see the activity in the brain and how that is calmed down 
after the tapping. So even though many of us for a long time have just known that it works from our own yeah. experience and mm -hmm. anecdotal evidence, having that kind of research, and I know you said you talked to Dawson and Dawson's study with the cortisol levels. Sure. So having that scientific validation of, yes, we can see the physical, this, you know, the quantifiable signs of stress being reduced and uh, sure. and that's why it's it's so powerful. But again, it's it it's it's too new for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. It's too different, mm -hmm. and and it's a th and anyone find and people find things a threat to their way of doing it. Sure. Yeah. It, it you know it's uh, as Schopenhauer said, all truth goes through three stages. Mm -hmm. First, it's ridiculed. Second, it's violently opposed. Third, it's accepted as having always been self-evident. <laughs> yes. So there are a lot of folks who have gone to that third stage. It's like, yeah, duh, tapping works. And yeah. a lot of people are saying it's ridiculous. And there are a lot of people who violently oppose it. I, I, most of 99% of the comments I get on YouTube are, oh, thank you. This has made such a difference. And I occasionally get that thing of, you look like an idiot. This is stupid. It doesn't work. And when they say it doesn't work, it's like, read through the hundreds of comments below where people say this has made such a difference, but also people feel threatened by it because sure. again, we want to maintain that homeostasis. Mm -hmm. So if I come along and say, you know, this kind of strange looking, but simple technique can help you make change. It's like, get away from me. Stop. <laughs> I don't want that. And so I need to find what's wrong with it. And, and the fact that it does look a little strange makes it that much easier. I can just dismiss it because it looks weird. Yeah. And so there's that. So while there's a lot of people accept it, there's a lot of people very strongly opposing it. And so that's where we're not getting to that place yet. It, 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 it continues to grow. I mean, it, 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 it's funny, like it in, as you introduced me, you said, well, I'm sure most, if not all of you know who Brad Yates, like, you know, <laughs> I've yeah. had, I think what I call five uh, five of what I call random fan encounters where I'm out on the street and someone says, Oh my God, you're Brad Yates. <laughs> but most people haven't a clue. So uh, there's, it, it's still, there's still a lot of people who are, who are just not aware of it. Yeah. Yeah, sure. So on that note, so if, yeah, you mentioned Peter Stapleton and the work over there. That's what some research found. The fact that Peter is um, associated with an academic institution over in Australia. So EFT has advanced a lot more over there as a result of that. And as you say, because of the, the research that's being produced, it was interesting to, to, to see that. But, but as you say, EFT has advanced, I think, because more and more people are finding out about it, the likes of Good Self and, and the research that's being conducted. And so, and, and I presume on your journey, you've seen it change so much over the years in terms of where it was to where it is and how many people do know about it. Where, where do you, I suppose two questions, where do you see the future of EFT and what is the future for Brad Yates? What's, what's, what's up next? What's, you know? <laughs> <laughs> well, certainly part of my future will be getting back on the road and doing live events. <laughs> no, like, oh, no <laughs> definitely missing that. Uh, and, and the future of EFT, it'll just keep growing until more and more people know about it. And yeah. I look forward to the day that, you know, someone can be out in public and tapping and, and someone else will look and go, oh, yeah, you know, that's a good reminder. I've got some stuff I should probably clear. Yeah, and it, sure. it, people won't think twice about it. Mm -hmm. it's, it. It's a ways off, but that's why I keep putting out the videos to, to try to make it as mainstream and accessible as possible. You know, I'm trying to make it accessible. Peter's making it valid. <laughs> you know, and so it's uh, it just keep getting better and better. And you're doing, I'd say, the most amazing job. This you're doing figures. I say just hit 30 million, which is just phenomenal. And how did you feel about that? It's just you are, you know, you are creating this wave, which is just amazing. Yeah, I I, I love it every time I hit a milestone like that. Just sure. recognizing how many. How many people I get to assist, you know, I never think of it as I'm transforming lives because it's people are doing it themselves. People transform their own lives. I'm just very blessed and grateful for the opportunity to be a guide in that and to, to make it simpler because for a lot of people, it's like, oh, I, I'm not sure what to say and I might get it wrong. It's like, okay, let me make it easy for you. <laughs> just, yeah. just follow it along until you get to the place where you feel like, okay, now, now I feel more comfortable doing it on my own. Yeah, of course. 
And on that note, we're going to do a little bit of a live tapping sequence, aren't we? So the viewers can see what it looks like. Is, would, that be, would that be okay? Absolutely. Just in case there's any, well, one, if there's anyone on here who has not done tapping before and you get to have a taste of it. And two, if you are a, a tapper and it's like, okay, let's do some tapping because it's yeah. fun to do. Yeah, yeah. Fantastic. So, so uh, everyone go ahead and close your eyes. Take a deep breath in and hold it. And let it go. And just following your breath through your body, just allow yourself to be aware of what's going on in there. Allow yourself to be centered and grounded as present as possible so as to receive maximum benefit from this exercise. And since this is Success Mindset TV, let's go ahead and allow yourself to maybe look at yourself in a full length mirror and say, I have a success mindset. And just let that rattle around inside and notice on a scale of zero to 10, how true that feels. And don't judge yourself harshly if the number is lower than you had hoped it would be. Just allowing yourself to be aware of, oh, this is where I'm at. And the number may be lower than you expected and that might explain why you may not have achieved certain things you've been trying to achieve. Just allow yourself to be aware of what you feel physically, what you feel emotionally, what thoughts, beliefs, and memories might come up as to why you couldn't or shouldn't have more of a success mindset. Allowing yourself to be aware of what feels important. Take a deep breath. Open your eyes. And uh, just tap where I tap and repeat back what I say. And Janine, if you'll be my echo voice, and then everyone else can just repeat what I say along with Janine. And uh, don't worry about getting it right, or, or you know, if, if you can always go back and find other videos on that explain more about the process for now, just, just follow along. And generally with EFT, we start off with what's bothering us. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, even though I have this problem, but just for the fun of it, we're gonna start with a positive phrase. Because even when we talk about the positive, it just naturally brings up whatever resistance we might have, yeah. we get to clear that stuff out. Sure. So. Okay. I choose to have even more of a success mindset. I choose to have even more of a success mindset. And I choose to love and accept myself. And I choose to love and accept myself. I choose to have an even more successful mindset. I choose to have an even more successful mindset. And I choose to love and honor myself. And I choose to love and honor myself. I choose to have more of a success mindset. I choose to have more of a success mindset. I choose to have greater clarity. I choose to have greater clarity. About what I really want about what I really want. And greater freedom to achieve it. And greater freedom to achieve it. I choose to have an even more successful mindset. I choose to have an even more successful mindset. And I choose to deeply and completely. And I choose to deeply and completely. Love, honor, and accept myself. Love, honor, and accept myself. And maybe anyone else involved. And maybe anyone else involved. I choose to have an even more successful mindset. I choose to have an even more successful mindset. Allowing myself to have a really successful mindset. Allowing myself to have a really successful mindset. Allowing myself to have greater clarity. Allowing myself to have greater clarity. About what I want. About what I want. And what I need to do to achieve it. And what I need to do to achieve it. And the freedom to do those things. And the freedom to do those things. Because sometimes I have resistance. Sometimes I have resistance. Sometimes I know what I need to do. Sometimes I know what I need to do. And I just don't do it. And I just don't do it. And it's not because I'm bad or stupid. It's not because I'm bad or stupid. It's not because I'm weak or lazy. It's not because I'm weak or lazy. It's just that part of me says. It's just part of me says. It may not be safe to achieve this. It may not be safe to achieve this. It might not be okay to have this. It might not be okay to have this. Based on old programming that I have. Based on old programming that I have. Old misunderstandings. Old misunderstandings. That I picked up from other people. That I picked up from other people. About why I shouldn't be more successful. About why I shouldn't be more successful. 
about how the consequences might be dangerous. About how the consequences might be dangerous. And I choose to clear these fears. And I choose to clear these fears. Allowing myself to see. Allowing myself to see. That success is my birthright. That success is my birthright. And I can handle what shows up. I can handle what shows up. So I'm clearing that resistance. So I'm clearing all that resistance. So my mindset becomes even more success oriented. My mindset becomes even more success orientated. The truth is. The truth is. I am always successful. I'm always successful. It's just a question of what I'm being successful at. It's just a question of what I'm being successful at. For much of the time. For much of the time. I am successfully keeping myself stuck. I'm successfully keeping myself stuck. Believing that it's safer to be in my comfort zone. Believing it's safer to be in my comfort zone. While my conscious mind says it would be great to be richer. My conscious mind said it would be great to be richer. My unconscious mind has some doubts. My unconscious mind has some doubts. My unconscious mind says it would be dangerous. My unconscious mind says it would be dangerous. So when I stop myself from taking positive action. So when I stop myself from taking positive action. Part of my mind is being very successful. Part of my mind is being very successful. At keeping me in my comfort zone. At keeping me in my comfort zone. And I love and appreciate those parts of me. I love and appreciate those parts of me. That are just trying to keep me safe. They're just trying to keep me safe. And I'm allowing myself to reconsider these beliefs. I'm allowing myself to reconsider these beliefs. Allowing myself to... Sorry, just watch you for a minute there. <laughs> allowing myself to see. Allowing myself to succeed. And I can handle that success. I can handle that success. I'm clearing the doubts about my ability to succeed. I'm clearing the doubts about my ability to succeed. I can handle whatever comes with that. I can handle whatever comes with that. So it's safe to have a more successful mindset. It's safe to have a more successful mindset. And it's a win-win situation. It's a win-win situation. So I'm setting myself free to have a more successful mindset. I'm setting myself free to have a more successful mindset. And allowing myself to feel good about that in body, mind, and spirit. And allow myself to feel good about that in body, mind, and spirit. And take a deep breath. Close your eyes. Look in that mirror again and say, I have a success mindset. And rate that again on a scale of zero to 10. And hopefully that number has come up. And if there was some doubt before, maybe you have some more clarity. Maybe even some memories have come up about, oh, this is why it might not feel safe to be more successful. And then you can uh, address those more directly, clear that stuff out and really clear the way for you to be as successful as possible because it is a win-win situation. Your success benefits the world. So thank you for doing that. Still have my eyes closed there. And I could, I could <laughs> yeah, I could really feel some, even for myself, some memories. It's good to drink water. And just for the viewers, briefly before we finish, I wanted to yawn. A lot of yawns and things come up, don't know, that's just the... Not because I'm bored, Brad. I'm loving every second of it. <laughs> yes. Uh, yes. So Yawning is one of the most common forms of, uh, of energy shifting during tapping. Yeah, but that was, that was fantastic. I could really feel some kind of memories coming up there and some other stuff that I'd really like to tap on. So that was really, yeah, really got a, And I just love, obviously, your clarity and your relaxed way that you, you do this stuff. And that's obviously what all the other 30 million viewers enjoy. <laughs> Thank you so much, Brad. Honestly, I really appreciate you taking the time out to, to be with me today, to be with us on Success Mindset TV, and to do some live tapping, which has just been absolutely phenomenal as well. Oh, my pleasure, Janine. Thank you so much for inviting me. Thank you for the work you're doing, and thanks for this opportunity to share this work. And well, thank you to everyone who's willing to do yeah, this uh, yeah. strange-looking technique, because as you set yourself free, again, you can do so much more good for the world as well. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Absolutely fantastic. So thank you so much. Thank you, Brad.